Baljeet's joining us from Teach Labs. Hi, Mark. Can you see me? Hey, Baljeet. Good to meet you. Likewise. Nice to meet you as well. Fantastic. The um, great. I'm glad we're continuing with the theme of um, how to use microservices and service meshes for fintech, but specifically around managing security and compliance risks. Now, this will this seems to be a good flow on from that last uh, talk as well, where you know, like really thinking about okay, when you're scaling a um, uh, a platform. Uh, bit related business, then how do you take all of these considerations into your technical architecture? Have you got your slide deck? Uh, yes, my slide deck is ready. I can start presenting. Please. See that. Can you see my screen? Okay, that's perfect. I'll jump off and uh, let you introduce your talk. Thanks. Perfect, thank you. Um, so good morning, good evening, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm Baljeet Mahoka, founder and CEO of Teach Lab. I'm based here in Vancouver in Canada. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about API discovery and uh, in the context of API economy and managing the security and compliance risks uh, that come come with APIs, um, just a quick a quick uh, introduction about myself and a brief uh, uh, intro about the company as well. Um, so Teach Lab is a uh, API discovery and lifecycle management uh, solution uh, providing uh, company. Uh, our focus is on risk management. Uh, from the perspective of discovering APIs, not uh, from marketplaces, but, but also uh, discovering APIs at various levels of granularity within an enterprise information systems and finding the uh, underlying compliance and security issues. Um, as a personal background, um, been in the data science space for uh, almost 15 years, um, I led the R and D team at Black Tuck Software, uh, and uh, built a team uh, uh, from uh, from uh, uh, open source compliance perspective. And uh, before that, with SAP as a research director, uh, helping with the open source risk management as well, uh, and also play some uh, some teaching role, advisory role at some of the universities in in Canada and abroad. Um, this is my contact information. Uh, I'll present that contact information uh, one more time at the end. So why API discovery and what it has to do with API economy? Um, I'm a data scientist by training. Um, so I would like to present some numbers. You may or may not be aware of these numbers, but this is really the crux of my presentation why API discovery is important for API economy, and in order for us to accelerate that API economy, you know why we need to manage security and compliance risks. So, from an industry uh, perspective, there are a lot of trends uh, that uh, peer organizations are tracking. Uh, more recently, um, Akamai published their result which talks about uh, uh, the internet traffic uh, being consisting of 83% that originates from APIs. That's a huge number. Now, this also means a uh, lot of the attack surfaces may actually or eventually may move to uh, uh, attacking APIs as well. Um, on the other side, there is a huge uh, revolution that has happened because of the open source in the last decade or so. And any application you pick, uh, either enterprise, mobile, social, uh, doesn't matter. You know, 96% uh, or above of those applications contain some open source. You know, the, the level of open source usage could be different depending on the nature of the business and the solution that the, the software uh, provides. Uh, 
but nonetheless, uh, pretty much every software that is being built has some open source ingredient. Um, Gartner published this uh, this number uh, recently as well. By next year, a majority of the tax surface is going to move to uh, to APIs. Now, this is really important from uh, uh, from the overall volume perspective as well. How many APIs actually we are talking about? Are we talking about thousands? Are we talking about hundreds and thousands? Are we talking about perhaps millions in the future? And some believe we do. We are we are talking about millions of APIs uh, in the future. Let's talk about today. So today, as a company, uh, we can already see these APIs in thousands. Many of those are publicly available APIs, but we believe a lot of are still private APIs. Uh, uh, this is a fintech-related uh, topic or, or a conference. Uh, so a lot of banks are moving into open API. As you know, I don't need to preach that. Uh, but a lot of APIs are still behind the firewalls. But eventually, just like with software, which became open source, you know, a lot of APIs are becoming open APIs. Um, any company you talk to, um, large companies, small companies, they all depend on APIs. Uh, any company you pick, large enterprise, you're talking about their own marketplaces with hundreds and uh, if not thousands and at least tens of hundreds of uh, APIs uh, into a single marketplace. So what it has to do with API discovery? Um, let me give you another perspective. This is a research uh, that my team did where we scanned roughly 2 million open source projects that we could find on GitHub or other different sources. Uh, this was primarily a corpus we took from, uh, from GitHub. And what we found is interesting uh, patterns uh, that we see from different enterprise API integrations perspective. In this particular graph that we show on the left-hand side, uh, we are showing the integrations uh, with Google APIs or Facebook APIs or Microsoft APIs. It is a kind of war that is going on. Uh, and you can see why as companies look for opportunities to connect with different business and solutions that are being uh, that are evolving. You know, APIs are playing major or important role or vital role uh, to connect those products and services. If you look at the uh, the graph at the, at the right hand side, there we are trying to compare what is the growth of APIs with respect to open source? I mean, it's it's very much known. We are we already have millions of open source projects that developers, enterprises, or users can access uh, that are publicly available. If you compare the growth of APIs, we believe that the amount of APIs or the number of APIs the, and the rate at which they're increasing is exceeding the growth of uh, open source. And there is a clear evidence. Uh, this is these are hardcore numbers that we we extracted by scanning and mining uh, millions of lines of code uh, uh, that is available uh, through the open source projects. Now let me show you an enterprise view. What is happening? So these were pictures were somehow uh, at the global scale. Uh, what's happening around the world, what's happening with different organizations. So it's an aggregator to solve. Similar trends are happening within enterprise. I mean, uh, some of which you might be aware of already because you are already dealing with uh, marketplaces. You have solutions uh, that help you build APIs. So you are kind of familiar with this. So, but let me, let me give you a comprehensive picture. What is happening in enterprise? Uh, in, a, in a typical large enterprise, which you may or may not be aware of. Now, as I mentioned already, a lot of APIs are actually coming through the usage of open source. But at the same time, you have a lot of legacy systems around which you have technical or business requirements of exposing certain pieces of data or exposing certain pieces of functionalities in order for partner integrations. Okay, so you create even wrappers around mainframe or writing COBOL language or other uh, other systems that are still very old-fashioned legacy systems, but still they uh, they are somehow connected 
through APIs with the outside world, or they're consuming APIs built by the by, by other organizations. Now, this is uh, this is very important because uh, these leg legacy systems have been existing uh, way before you know any API management or gateway solutions came into into the picture uh, five years or ten years ago or so. Now. A lot of times, these APIs that they are supposed to go through a central web application or a gateway where you know the access control policies or um, other aspects of API management can be applied. But as we speak with different enterprise customers, often is the case that um, some of these legacy, uh, leg legacy applications could directly talk to uh, enterprise applications one to one, so they bypass some of these uh, well-established control mechanisms, uh, and this could be part of the uh, business requirement because the teams evolved differently, and the solutions came into uh, 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 into into enterprise uh, ecosystems uh, at different times, and hence this this problem. At the same time, companies are buying companies, acquiring assets. Uh, when you acquire assets, you do not know what, API, what APIs are already in those assets, and it's really difficult or cumbersome job to actually do the technical due diligence to find those APIs. So the net effect of all these different uh, systems that are, that are uh, uh, linked with enterprise systems, they are fueling the growth of APIs. And the difficulty is, if you go ask any enterprise uh, leadership uh, level colleagues. Uh, if you ask this simple question, do you know all your APIs across all your products and services? Uh, really, you will find an answer um, where uh, you know you will see. Yes, we have accounted for all the APIs uh, from all the systems at all given uh, uh, point in time. Uh, coming from different uh, partners, from open source uh, uh, integrations or third-party acquisitions and whatnot. And the problem is, if you do not even know your APIs at various levels of granularity uh, across different products and services, how do you even assess your security and compliance posture? That becomes a very difficult problem. So the first and foremost question in order for for us to address your compliance and security uh, posture or, or then provide mitigation if there is any problem to provide those solutions is to first find where are all my APIs. That is the fundamental question to address the compliance and security issues. Now, as you can imagine, every API that you have either uh, not known is or, or somehow it's hidden or embedded in the software systems with millions of lines of codes, um, you know, under different business units, it becomes a very, very difficult problem. Of course, you can hire an army of people to, to manually do these investigations, but as you can imagine, and you will agree, without automation, without uh, tooling in place, it is nearly impossible to solve this problem. And that's where API discovery comes into play. So companies have woken up to this problem, they have started to look into this problem, uh, but not every company is at the same uh, level of uh, preparedness of, of, of at, at, their, at the journey of discovering those APIs. So, um, so the real critical problem in order for organizations, uh, digital organizations that are taking their API journey, uh, digital journey, is to address the API discovery problem. And the, and the question is very simple, find all my APIs. Now, let me go into a bit uh, uh, into what kind of problems we are talking about. Now, we have seen sessions around uh, FAPI, open API, standard security protocols, um, different authentication authorization mechanisms. Now, all of that is well and good, if you know how to apply those toolings and assess the security posture. So you do not know, you know, these APIs that are embedded, what authentication mechanisms they use, are they supposed to bypass certain rules, 
you know, to meet certain business goals and whatnot? How do you enforce those policies at the enterprise level uh, or, or, or even the laws of the lands? Now, some of the problems that we see, we take inspirations from the open source world where a lot of APIs right now as we deal could become open, open APIs, just like software became open source software and a lot of enterprises uh, uh, started to use those and adopt those open source in a, in, a, in a more open fashion. The nature of security and compliance issues with these open APIs could be much, much uh, difficult. Let me explain with a few examples. Um, you may end up using a, a publicly available free API, you know, a Twitter API or a Facebook API or LinkedIn API. Maybe it's a social app which is just collecting uh, people uh, people's tweet uh, to do the sentiment analysis. Or maybe you have a cool um, a language processing API, which is publicly available for free and whatnot. Now, the underlying terms of services, unlike in the software world where you have given set of licenses, these terms of services that govern the usage of those APIs could change. Um, once they change, then the obligation is on to you to comply to those changes and make sure that uh, you know you continue to use those APIs in a secure and compliant way. Now the difficulty is, unlike the software where uh, you embedded a library or built your entire solution around open source, you ship your product, you did the due before that you did the due diligence, you know the licenses. And and if you if you did if you did the right thing, then basically you are always compliant with the solution you ship, but not like with APIs. Because the moment you start to call those APIs, vendors uh, who have provided those APIs, they already know you're using their APIs. Okay, so the it could be free API, but eventually the policies change. Uh, even you may have commercial agreements in place, but the policies could change. Um, and you're looking at uh, 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 compliance issues uh, from a, a business uh, risk perspective. Now, the other difficulty could be uh, these APIs may evolve. Uh, they may uh, come up with a new version. Uh, of course, the vendor who has provided those APIs may continue to provide documentation, uh, but by nature, it's a difficult task for the developers to go track all their APIs and see what underlying changes have occurred and, and manage those either technical changes or the business changes. And we have seen while speaking with a lot of our prospects and customers that uh, even a small change in the API could actually lead to uh, basically uh, breaking your application or part of your application uh, which could which could affect your business continuity and whatnot. But again, this is an open API or an API that is publicly available, which you did not know, less documentation or other aspects of the of problem could, could come up. Likewise, uh, there could be intellectual property issues as well. Um, I don't want to go into the detail of certain lawsuits that have occurred uh, in recent times with large corporations. Uh, suing each other, and eventually the, the the discussions have come down to the usage of APIs. And uh, with my limited uh, legal knowledge, all I can tell you is that this is a very active legal area which is evolving, and there are copyright issues, how you describe your API, uh, how you call your API, even a code snippet that actually integrates an API could be copyrightable, and all those issues come into play. So there are serious intellectual property issues of using those APIs as well. To sum this up, um, I have prepared some user stories to uh, uh, talk about um, uh, what kind of problems uh, that we see or could occur in your organization or uh, other organizations. Uh, which relate to what I just described uh, uh, in my presentation. Uh, let me do a quick check uh, how we are doing the time. Okay, looks like uh, uh, we are good on time. I don't see any indications. 
So switching back to uh, my presentation mode, um, uh, Mark, are we doing good on time? We're doing good on time. Can, uh, show us the user story. That would be great. Um, to share with us another one of the user stories, and I think that'll be about our time. But I think it's worth uh, the audience hearing from one of those. We don't have any questions in the um, uh, in the chat at the moment. If you're listening in, throw, uh, let us know a question that we can ask Baljeet. But in the meantime, I was looking forward to hearing one of these. Yeah, great. Thanks, Mark. Um, so um, one of the user story is, which I have already mentioned, every open source project has uh, some kind of API integrations. A developer may download a library from GitHub or other repositories for using a particular functionality provided in that open source. However, those open source may have certain integrations that you may not aware of. And in this particular story, uh, a developer uh, who uh, seems to have less experience with uh, legal aspect of the this usage ends up using a library that provides a lot of uh, uh, integrations that are useful uh, and delivers the project on time, but again, not necessarily knowing that what could be the but the legal issues uh, around using those open source library. Another story where uh, a product launch has been delayed, and the the reason for that delay is um, the team could not figure out how to integrate a certain location or payment API. For example, product owner is looking into the reasons and and the program managers she is wishing that if they already had a catalog or a pre-approved uh, uh, API list, it would have been much, much easier for them uh, to, to do those integrations. And oftentimes, and it, it is not a secret, uh, APIs could be poorly documented, although it uh, we have we have made uh, huge progress uh, as as industry, where we have definitions available, where we have uh, you know documentations available. But nonetheless, you know, as uh, as the volume of APIs are growing, it is very much possible that the integrations of those APIs could be delayed simply because the documentation was not available, or if the documentation is available, it's cumbersome to read and play and test and try, and even in the sandbox environment could lead to these delays. And the salespeople, as usual, uh, they're worried about their uh, quarterly bonuses, their quarterly targets, and, and whatnot. So not a, not a good situation to be in because of that uh, delayed in API integration. Sorry, That's Mike, fantastic. you had a question? I do, I've got, let's do a quick couple of questions. Um, I, I mean, I love how you, what you're pointing at is the importance of like, so of like having inventories of your um, dependencies uh, and some uh, inventories of your pre-approved APIs. And you know, like this, the need for that kind of tooling. We've got a couple of questions. Andrew's asked about the taxonomy. Is the discovery of, uh, the discovery of APIs should be able to help with building like a master taxonomy as part of the master data project. Would that help with this, he asks? That, that's a good question. So discovery is not just about creating a repository where you can go see what APIs are available, either for internal or external usage, but discovery is also about finding the underlying security issues, finding the underlying compliance issues. If these are open APIs, what are the terms of services? Who's the vendor? Uh, what kind of authentication layer uh, that is provided? So uh, to sum this up, uh, uh, discovery is, of course, providing a master list or a pre-approved repository uh, in a, in a market uh, place like fashion. But discovery is also about finding the compliance and security issues and doing the technical due, due diligence that can avoid some of the problems I mentioned. Okay, thanks. I think Andrew was referring also to once you've got that discovery, that you're also able to then organize. Uh, what you discovered into like buckets so you're able out of that to create a sort of um uh, a taxonomy for yourself that i guess correct. yeah right that okay just uh, there are a couple of questions but we're running we've overplayed our time unfortunately there was a question about um rep um 
that does the solution allow for discovery of all types of APIs? And then another question about the KPIs that would be useful to support the governance aspect. I'm wondering when you jump off here, if you could go to the stage chat in your um, hop in and help answer some of those questions. So um, there's a few there, I'm just worried. I know KPIs, uh, given the rest of your talk, I'm sure that's something that you're really interested in sharing. I'm just worried about whether that will open up too big a conversation to get into right now. <laughs> Is that all right? Absolutely. Are you able to... Yeah, okay, yeah absolutely. Uh, if you allow me, I can type in my email address in the chat as well. Uh, so yep. people can contact me if they need to. Um, and also, I'm happy to go to hop in and uh, provide a live discussion as well. Okay, yeah, that's fantastic. Uh, and we'll um, uh, we'll invite you to leave the stage so that we can uh, have Madhu come up here. From thank Capital you so One. much, Mark. And thank you, to the audience. Thank really you amazing. To, I mean, it really touched a chord. A lot of people here having comments and feedback. So that's great. Thank you. 